On today's episode of Project Prometheus, we're going to be addressing the urgent need that has been created by the sinking of all but one of our Jebediah class battleships by introducing a brand new ship class. Today we're going to be adding the heavy cruiser ship class to the Project Prometheus official roster. Now what this also means is that the battleship ship class is going to get its uh, material cost threshold increased. This is going to allow both the human and AI fleet to build stronger, more capable battleships and is a reflection of what we've learned throughout this campaign series so far. As you'll see in this video, the heavy cruisers will be a potent addition to the fleet, but just because we get one also means the ChatGPT gets one. Hello everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back once again to Project Prometheus. Today we're going to be taking on a brand new ship class to add to our, our little project here. Now one thing I've learned as we've gone through Project Prometheus is that starting off by building the battleship of the fleet was really not the best idea uh, for several reasons. But the chief of these reasons is that the cost limit set for the battleship was initially 350k materials. I've come to realize over the course of the past few episodes that that's actually quite shallow. So what we're going to be doing in this episode is adjusting things a little bit. From now on, the heavy cruiser class will have a limit of 350,000 and the battleship class will have a limit that will be announced soon in the future, but most likely in the neighborhood of 450 to 500,000 materials. So with that being said, it now is our job to design a brand new heavy cruiser to complement this fleet. The ship pictured here, by the way, is the Wavebreaker, our Dreadnought. It is uh, just under 1.75 million in cost. Uh, but the heavy cruiser that I want to build today, I basically want to take the Barracuda, which is our light cruiser. There's one right over here. Uh, the Barracuda is low to the water, has a powerful AP heat main battery, uh, and a secondary HE battery. It's fast, it's nimble, and it's heavily armored. The Barracuda is exceptionally good at engaging other surface combatants, and I basically want to take this same philosophy and just blow it up a little bit, go a little bit bigger. So that's the heavy cruiser that we're going to be building today. For the heavy cruiser class, the biggest inspiration to my design came from the Barracuda. The Barracuda has been by far the most successful ship we've built so far, and that is because it is not too big of a hull for its equipment, it is heavily armored agile and it excels at its job as a surface combatant. The idea for the unsinkable, as I'm calling it, is to build a heavy cruiser that is the Barracuda but bigger and more capable. And the goal, the explicit goal of this specific project, is to build a heavy cruiser that can competently take out either the Jebediah or the Vanguard. Uh, and this will help us to show a concrete improvement on our shipbuilding skills from those first two battleships. So one of the notable features about this is the hull shape. The front of the unsinkable has a very unusual shape and uh, the rest of the hull is also a little bit unusual, but it comes with a potent arm armament and very heavy armor. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me introduce to you the unsinkable class heavy cruiser. Now I know what you're thinking, that name is just asking for it. And yes, you're right, it is. This cruiser uh, is definitely sinkable, but the name doesn't reflect that and neither does the design philosophy. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna give you guys a brief tour of the unsinkable, and then we are going to give it its very first sea trials and combat trials by engaging some nearby ChatGPT fleets. So first, the tour. So I tried something very novel with this design, namely with the hull here. So normally I've been doing hulls that are either straight, like on the Barracuda, or we do a tapered hull that's kind of flared like a fast battleship. This is almost a, a tumble home type design. It's almost got an inverted taper to it. It's not the most elegantly done. We still have these, these ridges here between the layers, which are, are not very nice to look at. Um, but it is not bad looking, in my opinion. Uh, we, we have this sort of crown at the front just to kind of like deflect any incoming fire. Then we have our main battery. So let's look at the specifications here. So this is a 402 millimeter cannon. We have two sets of them. And these are firing at 
3.4 seconds per shot, so relatively quickly, and these are AP heat just like on the Barracuda. Then we have our secondaries, of which there are a total of four, and these secondaries, they are, let's see, 236 millimeter, and they fire every 1.7 seconds. So similar to the Barracuda, the idea is main battery tears big holes in the armor slash penetrates, and secondary battery chews through anything soft. Uh, there's a couple interesting features to this design, namely this sort of pocketed thing here. Uh, in fact, I have to finish this, uh, but the idea there was to kind of hide those guns inside the hull. Also, in terms of hydrodynamics, this thing has four separate hydrofoils that enable it to remain level at almost all times. It also is very fast. It's currently cruising at 25 meters per second, and it's not even going in a straight line. On my way. Let's order it to go in a straight line to see what it can do. Uh, and now, let's have a look at the interiors here. So, there we go. All right. So the philosophy behind the unsinkable is simple. Big guns, heavy armor. So what we have here is a metal exterior and then a layer of heavy armor beam slopes. Uh, and then additional heavy armor on things that are, you know, in need of it, including the engines, the ammunition, which has actually been dispersed throughout the ship, unlike in previous builds, uh, and also the AI. In here we have some of our, our boiler and our fuel resources. Also, another notable feature, instead of a medium steam engine, we have a large steam engine. So this thing is quite fast. Um, and we have some cosmetic smokestacks, because if it doesn't look good, what's the point? Uh, <laughs> and then we have our bridge right up here. I will say uh, I'm not 100% happy with how this came out. It's not exactly what I envisioned, but it's pretty good, and I think it's one of the better ships we've built so far. But I'll leave it to the sea trials and the combat trials to see exactly how good this ship actually is. Now onto the sea trials. I've got three of our unsinkable heavy cruisers here, and we're sailing through a really, really severe storm. Now the thing about the unsinkables that should make them extra maneuverable is the fact, yes. in fact let me give them move orders, <laughs> the fact that they have hydrofoils which enables them to manage their pitch and roll much more actively than normal ships would. So what we'll see is the unsinkables will actually use these hydrofoils, you can see them here acting to manage its position in the water, which makes it especially good at traversing these environments. So as you can see, these waves are pretty big. Actually, I didn't turn the wave factor up like I normally did. How dare me give them a break? That's better. So these, you'd never see waves of this size in normal from the depths, but you get the idea. This is a pretty capable ship, at least in these seas. Now two notes about it, one of which is it's extremely heavy, it needs air pumps to stay afloat, and uh, the second of which is kind of related. I considered making this heavy cruiser like a submarine that surfaced to fight other surface combatants, but I could not figure out how to make the AI work uh, well enough to do that. Let's see where our other two are, yep, here's one, here's one going submarine mode. <laughs> It's funny because the bow of these ships almost looks like a submarine. So I, I thought it would be a logical progression for it to kind of like travel submerged and then emerge to fight other combatants. Look at that jump and slice right into the next wave. Very, very cool. Okay, where's the third one? Oh, here they are. Yeah, they're all sailing nicely in formation as if there's nothing at all going on. Yeah, and uh, actually, before I finished adding the armor, they tended to do wheelies, which was absolutely insane. Uh, it, just like the Kerman class, if you've seen our video where we built the Kerman class, the Kerman actually, I had to add basically a tumor to the bottom of it because it liked to take off like an airplane. Looks like this one is standing upright. Are you gonna flip? Oh, we got full dolphin mode. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I can't even imagine having an actual battle in these circumstances, but... Anyway, the unsinkable gets a grade A from our sea trials, assuming this one doesn't flip over backwards. Uh, 
it's it's got a lot of the advancements that we've learned throughout the project incorporated in it including hydrofoils hydrodynamic hulls and good center of mass locations so overall very good performance pretend that's not happening so it's time for everybody's favorite part of the video the combat trials and for this ship I like it so much we're not even doing combat trials, we're just sending it straight into battle against ChatGPT, and surely nothing could go wrong. Now that's been the catchphrase around here lately. So on the left we have the human side. We have two unsinkable class cruisers accompanied by three Kerman class destroyers. Now you might be wondering why would you send destroyers along with these cruisers? And the reason is simple. This looks to be just a, a fleet of three ships here. Right? We have two Kermans and one Vanguard. Should not be too bad. Or not two Kermans. Two Thunderclap cruisers, which are light cruisers. And one Vanguard, which is a battleship. But what you don't see is that the AI also has, somewhere in here, yes, one Leviathan submarine. So we said in the previous video that the submarines kind of change the dynamic of warfare. So what we're going to see in this video, I think, is that that submarine is going to potentially create huge problems, which is why we have these destroyers. But without further ado, let's follow along on our very own unsinkable and get this underway. Oh boy, there we go. Okay, so the unsinkables are designed to circle their enemies. You can see them both converging off here. That's kind of that's actually really nice. Normally the AI doesn't work that well. Oh, are we going to have a new ram addicted ship? Please do not ram the Kerman. It is far too early for that. All right, let's check in on this Vanguard here. Oh, I've just fallen off the ship. No, stop. The Vanguard brave as always is going straight into the middle of battle taking hits from torpedoes as well as the main batteries of both unsinkables. One of them, that one just rammed that Kerman, I'm pretty sure. And this one is coming in close here. But this one seems to be targeting the other Thunderclap and it is doing really heavy damage to it. Let's see here. Oh yeah, main batteries toast. Let's get a good look here. So what is actually really interesting about the unsinkable, and that I've noticed this in battles so far, the rounds, the AP heat rounds, we are getting actually a lot of over penetration. Uh, so some of those might have to be adjusted somewhat, but they also do not, do not always hit. They tend to glance off quite a bit. So that thunderclap looks like it's already destroyed. This, uh, this Kerman decided it wanted to ram the Vanguard for some reason. Oh, and a big hit on the Vanguard's main battery over there. No word on the status of the submarine. Something big just... Oh, the Vanguard's ammo cache has just been hit. That is thanks more likely than not due to this ship. Yeah, you can see there the path of the shells. So basically the way that these AP heat shells work... It actually looks like this ship has been sunk because it hit its... Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Why did you hit your team? Oh, it's reversing. Or something. <laughs> it's flipping the Kermit over. Oh my god. Okay, enough of that. So, the um, AP heat shells, basically what they do is they penetrate the armor and then they rip through the rest of the ship and eventually explode, hopefully deep within the enemy ship. Something else just took a big hit. Looks like this thunderclap. Oh yeah, this thing's been completely destroyed and the Kerman has decided to ram it and thanks to its all new ram bow, it can actually do that. That's a full loss on that ship. That thing is working fine out there, the unsinkable. The Vanguard has been disabled since the beginning of the battle and has no ammunition, but continues to be shredded. Now, it actually looks to me... Yeah, this... Okay. This is one of the problems, unfortunately, with a ship this heavy. Even though almost... Oh, actually, there's a big chunk of it taken out. Without functioning air pumps, the unsinkable 
sinks. And that's kind of what I had in mind when I named it. Although it does appear as though it's trying to surface here at the uh, expense of its friendly Kerman. Now let's look on the battlefield. What do we have left? So I see two salvage piles. One of those is most likely the Leviathan and that's one of the Thunderclaps. So the only ship that survived this far is the Vanguard. I actually am quite surprised. Much better performance than I thought. Although it is disappointing to see the unsinkable sinking in its first combat engagement. Let's watch this Vanguard get shredded for a little bit here. Yeah, this, this thing is... it's done for. You can get a good look at these shells and how they impact. So I'll train it right here for you. Yeah, so you'll see the, the armor of this ship is kind of peppered with holes. So what happens, if we can get a good look here, the shells come through the exterior wall, straight through it, they just punch through, and then they explode within the ship in here where all the uh, important internals are, which is why this thing looks like Swiss cheese right now. And let's see, what is... Oh, this is the... <laughs> yeah. See, the, my intention originally, and I actually tried to do this, was to put propellers all over the bottom of that ship, the unsinkable, and basically have it act as a submersible that could then surface in battle, but I couldn't get it to work properly. And what you'll see is if I now repair this ship, it'll go flying out of the water because the steam engines will spin back up the propulsion will come online, and there she goes. It almost looks like a submarine, so I, I think it's only fitting that we try to make it like one. But anyway, I would say that was a resounding success. Uh, we did have pretty severe damage to one of our unsinkables, but the other one was completely unscathed. Uh, that, I mean, that Kerman just did what Kerman does and rammed its friend. That one's fine. This one... Again, it's just doing what Kermans do. They just get destroyed like this, and then they fight with the, the tail end out of the water. But we completely annihilated the AI battle group. Um, at the expense of relatively little, they're going to hit each other. <laughs> Why would you do this? You are brothers. Why? <laughs> okay, pretending that didn't happen, that battle went pretty well. So I think it's time we amp things up. So this time around, the odds are decidedly stacked a lot less in our favor. Rather than the battle group that we were approaching before, we were now approaching a second AI battle group, and this one has a slightly different composition. In addition to that, we now only have one Kermit class destroyer, but to lead the charge, of course, and two of the unsinkable class battleships. Now, the enemy has four Catalina bombers, three Corsair interceptors, one of its carriers, the uh, Archon, and two Hurricane-class destroyers. I would say there's a significant chance that this battle is lost, but we're willing to take that risk because we're just starting to combat test these ships. We need to know if they work, and we need to know for sure. So, without further ado, let's kick things off. Here come the first shots. Direct hit to the carrier. Looks like, yep, straight through the armor, we've already blown one of their turrets. And we've blown the back one, too. Holy cow, this thing is getting shredded. Now, the air wing, we expect to probably do... Oh, those rockets are actually on target. Oof. One of the planes is down, but it did manage to hit the detection tower which is gonna make it real tough for this ship to work as intended. Let's see, where are our planes? It looks like out of the seven we started with, I see five, six still in the air. Oh, and this carrier is just getting destroyed. There goes the last of the main battery turrets and the ammunition has already been blown up. So this is essentially just a floating hull at this point. And it looks as though the Hurricanes are going in to ram it. However, the main guns of both of the Unsinkables are still... Oh, and it just... Why would you do this? Why? The AI... 
The AI is having a slight problem. Oh, something big just happened over here. Looks like a Corsair, I think, must have rammed the unsinkable. Didn't work out for the Corsair. There's another explosion. Uh, one of the Hurricane's ammunition reserves has been blown up. Well, this is an absolute slaughter. The unsinkables are just destroying these ships. That one has been... It can't move and it doesn't have any ammo. This one rammed its friend. And the Archon is dead in the water because it has literally no weapons left. Although it does look like that unsinkable is sinking. Seems to be a common problem for this ship. And that unsinkable is taking torpedo hits, it looks like. Are those torpedoes? They are. Interesting. This hurricane's about to snap in half. Look at those two ships. Yeah, that one's definitely sinking. Let's do a damage report on this unsinkable. Ah, uh, oh wow, okay. So actually quite a bit of torpedo damage along the belt line here. And that has caused the water pumps to be less effective. And they hit each other. Why would you do this? You fools. Okay, well clearly we need to tune the PIDs on these things. But one of the nice things about the unsinkable is that even in this state, thanks to its hydrofoils and its exceptionally powerful propulsion, it can still float. Meanwhile, these torpedoes from the dive bombers are posing a serious threat to these ships. And what has happened to our Kerman? Is it all the way over here? Is it dead in the water? Doesn't look like it. All three of the enemy's surface combatants are, are completely useless at this point. Ah, yes, that one's actually been properly destroyed. I was just about to say it still had its ammo, but now it has nothing. Here's a Kerman right over here. Looks like no propulsion. How? What did you do? You do have propulsion, you're just being dumb. Okay. Oh, it's actually actively being repaired. That's why it looks fine. And five enemy planes still in the air. With moderate damage to both of the unsinkables, largely because of their own uh, issues. So, can you just, like, attack a plane? Let's see. Do you have any main batteries left? Yes, you do. Ooh. They are targeting it. Oh, and they're getting hits in as well. Puncturing the wing here. Now, the thing about the main battery on this particular ship is that because it is made to penetrate heavy armor, it'll go straight through a plane like this without blowing up, which means you'll get minimal damage to the actual aircraft. Now, this is what the Kerman is supposed to be for. You're supposed to destroy these planes. Engaging. So I'll just order it into battle. Is it even going to move? Yeah, it looks like it's moving. So here's one Catalina. Let's get a look down at these guns. That's the one that was rammed. These are still functional, though, it looks like. At least, maybe, kind of. Can we get a shot off? Okay, I don't know what you're shooting at, but whatever. Torpedoes away. That could be bad. Are they gonna target us? Nope, they're going somewhere else. <laughs> Looks like the other unsinkable is still focused on destroying the carrier, which is actually a big waste of energy because that carrier is destroyed. Can you hit anything? I guess even if it can hit stuff, it doesn't really matter because the shells go straight through the planes. So let's see what we got going on here. Oh, okay. Okay, pretty decent hit. Oh, man. Interesting. Okay, yeah. Not to mention that this ship lost its detection tower to a ramming attack. I wonder if we restore... The battle is won at this point. These aircraft are, are merely harassing us. They don't have any realistic chance of sinking these ships. Oh, okay. Maybe they do. This one looks to be underwater. Uh, let's see. Let's assess the damage, I guess. Yep, this one is fully underwater. 
Okay. Interesting. Oh, I see what the problem is. We need more heavy armor is what the problem is. So let's, uh, pretending the battle is won, which actually, to be fair, there is a chance that it could not have been won because this ship is technically sunk and its sister ship is not able to move. But if we repair these so that they have full sensor capabilities, I wonder if they'll be able to hit the planes any better. I'm going to hazard a guess and say probably not, but... Let's see what happens. I'll refloat you two while we're at it, just for kicks. And these these guns should be able to help out a lot with these planes, I would think. Yup, that was a direct hit, but it, it didn't matter. Oh, there we go. Snapped her clean in half. That's a Catalina down. Now it's decided to target the ship again. Yes. Kill the plane. The plane is killing you. The aircraft carrier is dead. Ooh, another direct hit. Okay, awesome, awesome. And now this one is just Targeting. torpedoes away here. Let's see if it'll escape successfully. I doubt it. Oh, hits to the wing. <sighs> another hit. And there she goes. Okay, so that does answer our question. A lot of the issue was not having detection systems. Uh, that took out three Catalinas in a matter of minutes. Let's finish off this last one here. So, yeah, I have to figure out a way to prioritize different targets. So, there goes another one. I want to have basically the secondary guns prioritize aircraft uh, and the main guns prioritizing enemy surface combatants. Oh, it's raining parts. Nice. That leaves one plane, which I believe is a Corsair. Yep. And actually, this plane is crippled. Uh, it's lost its ability to turn. And an absolutely Swiss-cheesed aircraft carrier. And a capsized hurricane. I mean, this thing is just taking a beating. Like, ah. Uh, and that is the thing about not just this ship, but all of ChatGPT's ships. The AI tends to favor a huge ship with a really elegant hull, you know, beautifully done details and good proportions. But then it neglects to equip it with many weapons. And part of that could just be because this is from the depths and it's not a perfect representation of real life. But it also is just ChatGPT's inefficiency and is yet another reason why AI isn't going to beat humanity anytime soon. For the final confrontation of the evening, we are pitting the very first ship that we ever built against this ship, our most recent one. And the reason this is fair, it's actually kind of unfair for a couple of reasons. The Vanguard costs 304,000 in its current state. Now the uh, unsinkable, that's the Vanguard, the unsinkable, still the vanguard <laughs> let's get a little closer here the unsinkable which is not completely finished costs 337,000 so technically this ship has the leg up purely from a numbers perspective now not only that but the unsinkable incorporates almost everything that I've learned so far in this game so there is no reason why it should not destroy the vanguard completely destroy it so hopefully that's what we're about to see so let me get my character on this ship here, and let's get straight into it. Oh, I've landed right on the bow. All right, first batteries are off. Let's take a look at the Vanguard here. Now, one thing that the, uh, the Unsinkable excels at is it is very good at destroying other ships' main batteries very early in the fight. The reason for this is that the shells are able to penetrate the main armor very quickly and hit the soft squishy explosive bits very quickly. Now that hit that took out the main battery here on the Vanguard, that's basically a death sentence because currently it also looks like it lost both of its secondaries, yep. And it is taking hits through the front of the hull which will eventually tear into the vulnerable ammo reserves so at this point it's only a matter of time the vanguard already can't really fight back 
but it will put up a valiant effort nonetheless. I also have learned a lot about hull design from this project. You can see the Vanguard. It, it's got a... Oh, there goes the ammo. It's got a very cool hull shape, but not necessarily very efficient. Uh, there's, like, nothing underwater. It's completely flat. This is where the ammo was, no longer. Let's watch these two duke it out. Looks like the propulsion on the Vanguard is also slowing down. Another thing about the Unsinkable is that its preferred engagement distance is much further than most other ships in the fleet, which allows it to stay relatively out of harm's way while in combat. As we can see here, things are not going well for the AI Vanguard. But remember, because we have changed the cost limits around a little bit, that means that both the AI and the human side are going to get new, or at least improved, battleships. And that, uh, I'm kind of fearful, because ChatGPT has learned a lot about this project since we started. And there goes the rear battery. I think with the knowledge that the AI has, we could see it create a seriously powerful battleship. And it's very likely that the next ship that ChatGPT builds will be extremely capable. Now the other thing to remember is that while the human fleet has a dreadnought, ChatGPT does not. So eventually we're also going to be seeing an AI dreadnought, which I imagine will be one of the most fearsome ships that we have ever seen. But this Vanguard, things are not looking good. Considering this ship can barely fight back, I'm gonna use my magic explodey tool to sink it. And I'm gonna do that by chopping it in half. Now, I could let the other ship, the Unsinkable, finish the fight, but that takes too long. So, goodbye, Bow. Cracked clean in half. There she goes. <laughs> Man, the, the punishment just keeps coming. Did we lose a smokestack? Now, how did that happen? That, uh, that has never happened to me before. That's very strange. Okay, looks like we must have killed the AI here. Yep, yep. So there you have it. In just a few minutes, a heavy cruiser, this last ship we built, was able to take out the first ship we built with relative ease and relatively little damage. Uh, I've been learning so much at this project that I constantly want to revisit each ship and refit it. But that's something we're going to do towards the end, uh, and it's going to be sort of an end of project conclusion thing. Um, but anyway, I think the Unsinkable is a great demonstration of everything that you guys have helped to teach me. It's fast, it's heavily armored, and it's relatively powerful, and while it's not without its flaws, it certainly beats the Vanguard. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, there will be more Project Prometheus in the near future. We are running out of ship classes to add, and there will probably only be one more if there are any at all. So if you haven't already, you can submit your own fleet on our Discord. There are all sorts of instructions once you get in there. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.